Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece at Central New Mexico Community College. This is our last video that covers the factors that impact blood pressure. In this video, I we're going to take a look at the velocity of blood flow and how that impacts blood pressure. Anytime we talk about velocity, we of course express it in distance per time unit, like you drive 60 miles an hour, for instance. And so we use analogous units when we describe the velocity of blood flow. Typically, we express it in centimeters per second. How far does the blood travel per second? Because blood flow velocity is also going to impact blood pressure. But what we first need to focus on is what's going to uh, essentially uh, create a difference in blood flow velocity depending on where we are in the circulatory system. So let's take a look at the graphs on the right hand side. And what we see here in the top graph is the total cross-sectional area of vessels. So what we're talking about here now is that we're adding up the lumen diameters of all the elastic arteries, or I shouldn't say diameters, we're looking at cross-sectional areas. So slice a vessel and then measure the whole surface area of that lumen and add up all the surface areas of all the elastic arteries and then of the muscular arteries, the capillaries, all the way down to the vena cavae. And what we see is that of all the different vessel types, it is the capillaries, let me use a different color here that is not so confusing with red and blue, it is the capillaries right here, capillaries, that have the highest cross-sectional area. Now this should make sense, which we express by the way in, in um, square centimeters typically or square millimeters. Um, capillaries are tiny, 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 tiny branches, microscopic branches of some of the smallest venules in the body. And there are so many capillaries distributed throughout all the tissues of all the organs in the body that by the time we add up all their lumen cross-sectional areas, we get to a huge amount. So that's one thing to be aware of that it's the capillaries that have the highest cross-sectional area. While when we get to the bigger arteries and we look at the bigger veins, we have a very small cross-sectional area. And why is that? Because there are much fewer of these vessels. For instance, we only have two vena cavae, right? And therefore, we're going to have um, very few lumen surface areas that we can add up to end up with a much smaller total cross-sectional area. So that's one piece of information for you to understand. Let's now take a look at the bottom graph. In the bottom graph we are now focusing on the velocity of blood flow expressed in centimeters per second. Once again in these various different blood vessels laid out in the exact same order as they occur in the cir circulatory uh, pathway. And notice that if you compare these two graphs, they are totally opposite one another. So we find that the total cross-sectional area in the capillaries is the highest. And notice what you see here with, when it comes to blood flow velocity in the capillaries. It is slowest. This makes sense because we don't want the blood to just rush through those capillaries. The capillaries function in gas exchange, nutrient waste exchange, and even other functions that we're about to study. So we want the blood to be really sluggish there. The blood actually does pick up speed again in the veins because all the capillaries with their tiny little lumens are going to merge to form venules with bigger lumens to veins with even bigger lumens and we're going to have much less resistance there and much more blood flowing into 
um, these vessels from many, 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 many different little capillaries, and that's going to an increase uh, our blood velo veloc flow velocity there. So we have an, um, a direct inverse relationship between total cross-sectional area of blood vessel types and um, velocity of blood flow. This is important for you to understand, this direct inverse relationship. Let's summarize now a lot of information you've learned about in the previous videos. On the right hand side you see the exact same graphs that we just discussed. Here is your total cross-sectional area in your different blood vessels with the total cross-sectional area being the highest in the capillaries, lowest in the big vessels of which there are few. And we see a direct inverse relationship to total cross-sectional area with regards to velocity of blood flow, therefore flow lowest in capillaries, highest of course in our arteries and then the flow picks up again in the veins. On the left side we see graphs that represent a relationship between um, the types of blood vessel and their diameter and of course with the diameter of our vessels being very high in our elastic and muscular arteries and in our veins and lowest in the capillaries and the arterioles and venules that feed into those capillary beds. This information will need to be applied to this information of the cross-sectional area, right? Uh, clearly vessel diameter is going to impact cross-sectional area but what we also need to keep in mind when we calculate total cross-sectional area is how many of those blood vessel types there are. Remember, we have many, 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 many capillaries, very few elastic arteries, just to give a couple of examples. Two vena cavi, many, 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 many capillaries. Finally, the bottom graph here on the left-hand side represents mean arterial pressure. So we have pressure expressed here in uh, millimeters of mercury and the different blood vessel types. Notice that we have on the x-axis the same uh, blood vessel types listed in the same order. And mean arterial pressure is going to be highest in the arteries, less in the capillaries, all the way down to almost zero, zero in the vena cavi to be zero in the atria. Remember that mean arterial pressure is calculated from diastolic pressure and pulse pressure such that we uh, have a single number that therefore does not reflect the pulsatile nature of the arterial blood pressure. And so try to relate MAP also to our uh, blood velocity in relation to our total cross-sectional cross area. Now remember blood flow and velocity of blood flow are going to impact blood pressure and so we can see that there's pretty much a direct relationship between blood flow velocity and um, MAP up, and, up to the point of the capillaries more or less. After that point when we especially get to the venous system we see that MAP continually decreases despite the fact that our blood flow velocity goes up. The blood flow velocity goes up because remember we have all this blood from all these tiny little capillaries getting dumped into fewer and fewer and fewer um, veins. It's as if many little arteries of a river um, are going to now merge together into the single big river and that of course is going to increase the velocity of the flow of the river. Now in if we come back here to our pressure graph the reason why we see uh, a decrease a continuous decrease in the map of our veins is because they are so compliant. So despite the fact that there might actually be higher velocity of blood flow we have such compliance in the, these veins 
that the blood pressure is not going to continue increasing. Instead, it's going to continue to decrease.